Hi, this is Anne with Fiber Designs by Anne, and today I'm painting fabric leaves using textile paint and I'm quilting them onto a purchased apron. I'll be doing this using Jacquard textile color paints, and the colors will be a burnt umber, yellow ochre, yellow, red, apple green, and spruce. I'm painting on a piece of fabric. It's 100% cotton fabric, like a Pima fabric, and I've treated it with a product called Tyrell Magic Spray Stabilizer. Um, Tyrell Arts is not sponsoring this, and I'm not being paid. I just really like the product, and it works well for stabilizing fabric under my paint. So I have a couple lids for palettes. I'm using three round brushes. I have three round brushes. I'm not sure if I'll be using them all, and different sizes and I have a little paper towel and a little water. I'm gonna get, begin by putting, getting my, my paintbrushes wet and then I'm gonna dip it into the uh, um, <clears throat> burnt umber. And I'm just tapping it on. I'm not looking at a picture of a leaf, you could do that. I'm just tapping it on to be the little marks that are on leaves sometimes, fallen leaves. And right now I'm planning to do four, but that will change and I'll end up doing five. Because the fabric is dry and my brush and paint aren't too liquid, the paint hits the fabric and pretty much stays put. The more moisture I use, the more it will bleed or bloom onto the fabric. And then I'll just go ahead and, and dip my paint into uh, other colors. This happens to be the yellow ochre. And this is not a fine painting lesson, as you can tell. I'm just, it's rather abstract, and I'm holding the brush loosely. I'm just gonna put the color down, knowing that these will be cut out in leaf shapes, the fabric will be cut out. And so, that will tell you that they're leaves, and the colors can go just about anywhere. If you're doing this, I hope you'll relax and just sort of enjoy and watch the paint and the brush and the water and see what they do on the fabric. And I put the tip down of the brush, I put the tip down, pull it a little bit and spin it a little bit and drag it toward myself. This is just the way I do it. Like I said, this is no fine painting. You really have to try it to explore and see how these items, the products, the water and the paint and the fabric that's treated move and ha what they'll kind of do their own thing. You only have a certain amount of control and I kind of like that for this. So I like to use one color at a time, but I'll switch off. You'll see that I'll switch off and just sort of choose whatever, whichever color feels like the one I want to use next. Blending them together just on my little palettes adding a little more dots now that that's wet you can see how it's not as strong a color and how it moves more than the initial drops that were put down on um, dots that were put down on the dry fabric <clears throat> now I'm going to go ahead because it's pretty repetitious I'm just putting the paint and water on my brush mixing them around here I am mixing the green and the spruce to get a little bit of a different color and uh, so I'm going to speed this up so that uh, it goes a little bit quicker for you because it is a lot of repetition and you'll just be able to see the different colors, the way I put them down on different leaves, different areas. Again, remembering that these will be cut out in the shape of leaves when I'm done. And I'll show that. And so I zoomed in a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Because the fat where the fabric is dry, the paint will hit it and not move very much. Again, depending on how much moisture you have in on the brush and in the paint. And I, I'll show you later, I, I cut these when I cut these out, the outside parts of this fabric that aren't being painted or the edge around the edges, the white parts, I save those because I can paint on those again and use them for other leaves. These are sort of just fancy leaves. They could be any leaf you want. I really like um, 
in particular ornamental pear leaves after they've fallen off the tree they are just sometimes so beautiful with the reds just different colors and different marks but like I said I wasn't obviously literally looking at anything in particular because with leaves you know just about anything goes right And I'm going back and forth. I am sometimes I'm rinsing my brush off, brush off. Sometimes I'm just pulling it into the next color. Because even if mud kind of happens, which you'll see on the fifth leaf that I did, it sort of was a muddy, a muddy color, but it still I think ended up being a great looking little leaf. Sometimes with the paint uh, put down where it looks like half of the leaf is one color and half is the other, you can tell where the center line is. Other times, as I will show on here, I get a little, get a little bit of a darker color or like the brown I was using in the first place and pull a center stem line through the leaf which may or may not like that, <laughs> may or may not be something you want to do. I'm going to stitch down there anyway, so it really doesn't matter that much. But even with the stitching, sometimes the suggestion of a painted line is kind of nice. Um, because I'm trying to keep my head out of the camera, uh, it's a little more loose than I would actually probably be painting. If I could really get down and close to this, I would paint it a little. A little less abstract maybe but I'm I'm really enjoying this it's relaxing and fun and there's really not too many rules you can't go wrong if you've never painted before I think you could still do this with success there was a little on this fifth ring uh, fifth leaf that I'm doing there was a little green dot it's about in the center you can see and that just splattered when I was doing the other four leaves and so I figured <clears throat> since I'm going to do another one I'll just lay it on top of that when they're completely dry well I should say I'm, go I'm going to let them completely dry and you can rush it with the iron it may change it may change them a little if they're really wet when you iron them But what I'm going to do is cut a piece of, so they're dry there, and I have a piece of fusible web. This is Wonder Under uh, 805, and it's rough on one side and smooth on the other. The rough side is the side that has the adhesive. So I've put down a piece of parchment paper, as you can see, and my leaves are facing down. Pretty side is on my ironing surface. And I've put the fusible with the rough side, the adhesive side, down on top of my leaves, the back of my leaves. And now I have a hot dry iron. <coughs> And I'm just going to iron it on briefly. Now, this is where you're going to do as I say and not as I do. You want to let that cool completely. Otherwise, it may give you grief when you try to pull it up. And you could cut it with the paper on the back, but it's hard on really good scissors for one thing, so I wouldn't do that. And because the Tiriel Magic made the paper more stable, it's uh, easier to cut. So I'm going to remove that paper but even still it really wasn't cool enough so it pulled a little of the adhesive there so I and I could have kept going but I decided to just hit it again with the iron just to get a better bond it's not that big a deal because these are going to be sewn down but that's what I did the other side's cool so I'm going to pull it off would have been better to wait a little while but anyway I pulled it off so now I'm going to take, I have these curved scissors that I love, but I'm going to take my larger scissors and just cut them each leaf out so that it's a little easier to manage when I cut it in the actual shape. And I got a little close to the edge, wish I hadn't done that on that one. And that little piece that was on the side was just a little leaf I was going to make and I decided not to do it. So all these white pieces I'm cutting off, I'm going to save those because I can use those, paint other things on them. And I'll take these curved scissors and 
just cut out the shape following any edge of the, uh, of the uh, painting that I want. And I like to try and get one end of it to be a point and one end to look a little more like a cut stem. And you can look at it and decide. Sometimes it doesn't matter which way you do that. That was a little too pointy, so I just cut the tip of it off. The other thing, some of these have a sort of a scallopy, ruffly, ruffly little edge, and I will cut that. You'll see here in a bit that I'll cut it, just wiggle the fabric and the scissors back and forth right there, and it makes the edge more interesting for one thing. And uh, I'm just getting rid of that little white tip on there, kind of bothers me. Although it wouldn't, it looks perfectly fine on a leaf. So in hindsight, I wish I had done this on each leaf because I really like, if you can see that a little better there, I really like that ruffly edge. Dropsy day. So just continue on cutting these out. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit again. Making a point and leaving a stem end. I like that best. And I'll show you on the when they're put on the black fabric how much more intense they look and vibrant. And speaking of the black fabric, uh, the next bit is hard to see some of it because of that black fabric and even with all the lights I have apparently they're not set right or the best lights so I won't be working on black fabric again until I get that straightened away so please bear with me I do show close-ups in some pictures where you can see what you can't see during this part now I have the apron down on my uh, I'm just on my surface and I've taken a piece of batting this one's already cut out but you want to just take a hundred percent thin cotton batting and you can lay it on the back of the apron and you want a straight line at the top and the bottom and then you can just push your finger around the edge of the binding on that apron and that's where you'll cut it for the curves it's really quite simple and then I'm gonna lay it on a this is just black cotton fabric it's not canvasy like the apron it's just just black cotton <clears throat> and I'm gonna cut out about a quarter of an inch I'm just freehanding it here and I could free I thought about freehanding it there and then I thought no let's use a the ruler, but you can do this, as I say there, you can do this with scissors just fine. It, it does not have to be really straight. It's not that picky. We're just going to be turning this edge under. So I cut all four sides out. And then you're going to want to use a glue stick. Rulers are always tricky with that reflection and glare. Sorry about that. So now I put a little something down so I don't get glue all over my, my uh, surface here, but that's just the only reason I have a piece of, grab a piece of paper. And this is glue stick that dries clear. And you'll just rub it along the edges. and push them over onto the, uh, the batting. When I was doing this at first, I wasn't really sure how I wanted to do that tip uh, where the curve is, but then I finally decided to do it the way I always do those kind of tips, which is to pull this tip is what I'm talking about right there. And you can trim those so they're blunt and not pointy, that might help, but. To just pull that tip straight down like that and then bring both sides in so it makes kind of a miter is the best thing to do when your fingers start to get sticky. It's sort of a challenge to not be sticking and unsticking everything that I put down. So I've done that there and I'll do the same thing on the side Bring the point down and bring the sides up. Too much glue. And that makes the fine finished edge. Now I'm going to uh, 
get back on my this this edge is is uh, more of a straight degree so it there wasn't any worry I could just fold that one down easily back of my ironing surface with a part, piece of parchment paper and this time the parchment paper is to keep my iron from getting glue on it so I will lay the parchment paper on top of this piece this is I'm going to call this the batting panel just make sure all the the edges that are folded over the batting are nice and, and uh, folded over the right way and this so this presses the edge really nice and it dries the glue at the same time so I have this panel that will fit nicely into the inside of my uh, of the apron now I'm on the front of the apron right now just for marking this so I'm going to take that panel and decide where the leaves are going to go and that's about where the leaves are going to go you wouldn't have to do this, but it just makes it a little bit easier. So this is the front, as I said, the front of my apron, and now I'm going to lay the leaves down. And move them around. You can move them around forever. But, and decide if you want to use all the leaves that you have. Because they're fusible, once they're fused down, they will not probably move, especially after they're stitched. So I just get them in an arrangement that I like. I thought I liked. And looking back, of course, I think, oh, I should have changed that. But anyway, it's good enough. And I think they look so pretty. So now they're where I want them to be, more or less. And I have my hot dry iron again. And I'm going to lay the parchment on. This is so if any adhesive is sticking out of the edge of those leaves, it won't get on my iron. And also helps the iron slide a little better. And just, just press it down, iron it down so that they're on there nice and firm, nice and attached. So now I'm just going to grab a, a piece of cloth and wipe that chalk dust off. You could mark that with something that would, would go away with the iron. That would be fine too. But on black, white, and chalk seem to work best. Now I'm on the uh, inside of the, the back of the inside, I should say, of the apron. And my leaves are on the other side. And I'm putting the panel in place. And now I'm going to stitch on the very top edge of that and on the very bottom edge to hold it on. And then I'm going to stitch again a quarter inch away from the top. I was going to do it on the bottom but I liked it better with just the double line on top, so I only did one line at the bottom. I'm not doing the sides, uh, so I'll pin it before I take it to the regular sewing machine and stitch those stitching lines. I'm not doing worrying about the side edges because when I quilt it, there will be I'm doing a do I'm going to do loop uh, type quilting, and that will hold that edge down enough. It's not going to come undone. It'll be fine. You could stitch up the sides if it makes you feel better, but like I said, it, it's fine not to, to do that. So I'm just pinning it in these six, six spots just to hold it. And I'm actually going to sew this from this side instead of from the front. Because it's just easier to see the edge. <coughs> Excuse me, it's easier to see the edge. So here it is finished, the stitching. Which I even missed one place on there, but it's not going to matter because I'm going to quilt it. You can see it a little better on that black fabric here. Sorry, it's a little out of focus. So I just stitched two lines on the top, like I said, and one on the bottom to hold that panel in place. Now for the quilting. So I'm going to use black thread. You could do any color you like. And I'm just going to do the center and then around the sides. At least that's my plan. When I'm doing this, a lot of times I change my mind. I'll be doing this and I'll even stitch twice up the center on some of these. And I wish I had done that and all. I still may go back and do that on all of them because I like that. It just reinforces that center line on the leaf, the stem line. Just looks a little stronger, gives it a little more detail. A little stronger detail. But to begin with, I'll do a needle down and up again to bring my thread up from the bobbin, from the bottom 
bobbin. And then I'll just take a couple tacking stitches. And as I said, I'll go up the center. And if there's a drawn, a painted line on there, then that's fun to follow and easier. And then I'll go down and around. This is sort of like illustration drawing that's not fine. I'm okay if I go off the, off the leaf, especially with this black thread, because on the black fabric, it's not that noticeable. And uh, you saw me just move my hand up, and I'm going to do it again now. Normally when I quilt, free motion quilt, or any quilting, I do a test sandwich, which would be taking the fabric that I'm going to quilt on, the exact same fabric that I'm going to quilt on, and, I'll, and I will take it to my machine and get my tension right. Well, I didn't do that on this because my, the apron is like the canvasy fabric. I have the batting, I have the other cotton fabric, and I'm quilting on painted fabric. So those would all make a difference. So I just decided, because this was just an apron, and uh, it's not going to be that noticeable, that I would do check the tension as I sewed. So I did get it better after the first two lines of stitching there. So now when I'm going off the leaf to get to the next leaf, I just do a little loop. Again, I'm going down the center, but you notice I started at the top this time instead of the bottom, which would be okay but for some reason, I was thinking I needed to finish at the top, which I wouldn't have. I think I do that on this leaf. So I go back up. I could have just gone off there where I was at the bottom. But like I said, I love this double stitching down the center. And again, to get to the next, I travel by doing little loops. I know you can't see those very well. I'll show a picture at the end. You can't see them probably at all. I'll show a picture at the end that will show, or toward the end that will show uh, those loops. So I'm speaking up here because it's repetitious. Yeah, I do. I really like those leaves better with the, the, the double stitch stem. So I may go back and do that anyway. And where it's scallopy, you can do that design. It's just, again, it's just fun. If we worry about everything, we'll never jump in there and do this free motion quilting. And it's just so much fun, I think. So I just fill in the whole background and catch the edge because that's that edge I didn't turn over on the sides, turn under, uh, excuse me, didn't stitch down, I should say. And I'll just keep doing that. Don't care if I go over the same lines. And honestly, I said this in my last video with the black fabric, I could hardly see it even as I'm quilting. So I need to get my lights better, but I think the next projects won't be on black. I love it and I love how the fabric painted leaves pop on it, but not so good for showing videos in videos. So then I just stitched a little more and I cut my stitching. And there you can kind of see my little loops and just scrolling around sort of. So I hope if you like this, you'll give it a try and that you'll give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed and tap the bell so you'll get the new videos I have coming out. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.